Well, why where's did Jesus the body ask, at? where have you laid him to the girl? Because he didn't know. Jesus didn't know where they laid him. Jesus, whenever the girl touches him, and he turns around and he says he felt the power go from him. He turned around and said, who touched me? Why? Because he didn't know. Um, there's no sense in which we believe whenever Jesus was here on the earth that he act, uh, had access to his omniscience. Or excuse me, utilized his omniscience. In other words, he was not walking around in full knowledge of everything and everybody and what's going to happen the next day and using his power, using his knowledge in order to get through the day. And the reason why we believe this, it's very fundamental to our understanding of redemption. We believe this because Christ had to live just as we live. Every day not knowing. Uh, every day not using His power in order to make it through this life. He had to be just like one of us in every way. Utilizing the power of the Holy Spirit in order to make it through this life rather than utilizing His own power. And this is the temptation that happened in the garden or excuse me, in the wilderness. It's really a funny temptation. I think I mentioned this maybe last week. But in, in the wilderness, Satan came and tempted him three times. And the first temptation was what? Turn this stone into bread. Turn this stone into bread. And you're like, I, whenever I read this, I'm like, you know, what, what's going on here, Satan? You're, you're the cosmic evil of the universe, and you're, you're meeting the eternal creator whom you hate. What is the first temptation you do? Turn this stone into bread. I mean, like, big deal. Who, I mean, it, it, there's not an 11th commandment that says you shall not turn stones into bread whenever you're real hungry. Um, why did he tempt them to do that? The other ones are understandable. Worship me and recognize me. Um, show everybody your power. Those are understandable, but this one is really confusing unless you understand exactly what Satan was trying to get him to do. You see, Christ was hungry. He was on a fast. There was no evil in breaking the fast. There was no sin in, in satisfying your hunger. As a matter of fact, just a little bit later, the angels come down and comfort him. So why was Satan tempting him to do this? That's the big question. And it's fundamental to the question that you asked. Satan was trying to get Christ to utilize his omnipotence, his power to do anything in order to satisfy a meager hunger. Something that was just to get through this. Are you really hungry? You got the power. Why don't you just use it? But if he did, what would have happened if he would have used his power in order to satisfy his hunger? Yeah, a, a redemption is over. Cross is canceled. Start over. It's done. You have forfeited your ability to hang on the cross and represent men. Why? Because when you and I are hungry, we can't utilize our omnipotence to satisfy our hunger. He was trying to get him to use his powers beyond what we can do in order to make it through this life. This is one of the great things about Christ is that whenever we see him, whenever we see him here on the earth, he was not only tempted in every way that we are, but in so many ways that we never are. We are never tempted when we're really hungry to turn anything into bread to satisfy our hunger. So we can't do that. And we're never tempted when our enemies are against us and we're hanging on a cross to snap our fingers and wipe them all out because we can't do that. But he was tempted to utilize his power at any time in order to show his glory, in order to show everybody who he was, and in order to satisfy just meager hungers like, like his uh, desire to turn or to satisfy his hunger. The question is, uh, even in that same story, when Jesus is told about Lazarus' death, Jesus seems to have an omniscient knowledge, even though he's not there yet, obviously, and won't be there for four days, um, seems to have an omniscient knowledge of what took place. Doesn't that mean he was omniscient and did access or, or did put into use this divine attribute? My suggestion, and not everybody would agree with me, um, and it's a controversial issue in Christology, but my suggestion would be, in instances like that, where Jesus seems to have supernatural knowledge, he's actually not going outside any of the bounds of what the prophets of the Old Testament were capable of as well. Prophets had supernatural knowledge all the time. They knew things they had no way of knowing. That's the nature of prophecy, right? I'm going to tell you this about yourself. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen next year. I'm going to tell you the King Ezra that's going to be born 700 years from now. They were able to do that 
Because of what force? What power? The Holy Spirit. Spirit. What do the Gospel writers, and Luke in particular, say repeatedly about Jesus and where he gets the power to do the things that he does from? In the Spirit and the power of the Spirit. It says that over and over again. Yeah, even whenever he goes into the wilderness to be tempted, it said the Spirit led him into the wilderness. Yeah. He, he, he was conti- I believe that he was continually under the power of the Holy Spirit and under the power of God, never accessing his own attributes in order to make it through this life, to see ahead in the future, to see ahead into people's minds, to understand things. He was given the wisdom and the knowledge that the Holy Spirit gave him only that which was in accordance with his mission and not beyond. But also understand when we say that, it's not like we go, well, you know, Elijah probably knew as much as Jesus either. Because what was the difference between Elijah and Elisha and John the Baptist and every prophetic figure in Jesus? Not that they weren't God. What was the difference? I mean, obviously that's one too, but in it, they were sinners. They were fallen. They could never know anything. They could never fully rely upon the Holy Spirit. They were incapable of fully relying upon the Holy Spirit and therefore of fully exercising that prophetic gift. Jesus was the one and only figure in history who, because he didn't have that sin nature and because he didn't choose to sin, was able to fully rely on and therefore fully manifest the Holy Spirit's power more than anyone that had ever come before. Now, again, I know that can sound unusual. That's definitely controversial. Not everyone would agree Here, with me. Here's the controversy. Here's the only two positions that evangelicals take on this. Uh, Roman Catholics actually do have a different view where Christ was omniscient even from the womb. He knew everything even as you know, he was conceived at that moment. He knew everything. He accessed his uh, complete omniscience. Um, but in evangelicalism, it's either this. Either he, had co- he relied completely on the Holy Spirit, as I believe he did, or only whenever it was in accordance with his mission did he access his own powers, his own, own omniscience, or his own omnipotence, his own knowledge, or his own power in order to do something. But he never, like Satan tempted him to do, did it for self-abasement to satisfy himself in order to make it through this life. That's the thing that's not controversial. He did not ever use his powers or the power of the Holy Spirit to make it through this life. And we can certainly say if you have troubles with the idea of Jesus not knowing something, he speaks himself very, very clearly in Matthew 24, 35 and says the Son of Man doesn't know the hour. So if you go, well, I just, I just have problems with this. I can't say that Jesus didn't know. Jesus said, I don't know. Yeah. Because he didn't need to know. Does he know now? Of course. But he didn't need to know for his mission. 